Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Looking forward to, uh, this is the first coffee time that we have together in the beginning of the year. So uh, thank you for uh, joining me this morning. So as we come together today, of course, Happy New Year, New Year, lots going on. But here at Shoreline Community Church, we're beginning by having a week of prayer coming together. And like we do every year, we, we started off with prayer. So this morning in our coffee time and devotion together, we're going to be talking a little bit about prayer, uh, some of my favorite ways to pray and, and how I enjoy praying. But as you're coming out this morning, I encourage you to just say hello as you're coming on and let me know that you're there. And uh, we'll just have a good time having coffee together. So I'm going to grab one more sip before we, we dive in. So Having uh, what, what, one of my favorite coffees. Sometimes people ask, you know, Dwayne, what's your favorite coffee? Uh, this morning I'm drinking Storyville, local roaster here in Seattle. And uh, just super consistent, lots of fun. So one, I'm going to take one sip and then we're going to dive right in here this morning. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, as we dive in, just wanted to recap. This past weekend we talked about prayer. And one of the things that we know is that when we look to Scripture, we see that the Bible is clear on how we are transformed through prayer. Uh, when we pray, our lives are transformed, the world around us is transformed. And if you're with us Sunday, you saw that how uh, just when, when people prayed, uh, things happen. You know, uh, Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we see that Hannah is unable to have children. Uh, she prays for her son, and, and one of Israel's greatest prophets, what many would say the greatest prophet, uh, Samuel is born. Uh, in the New Testament, Peter is in prison for preaching the gospel. Uh, the church prays for Peter, and an angel shows up, and he is led out by an angel. Um, amazing, amazing. Uh, back to the Old Testament, 2 Kings, Jerusalem is under attack. Uh, King Hezekiah prays, and his nation is rescued. I mean, we look in, at, at the Word of God and these accounts, and even our own lives, we pray and things happen. There's power that takes place in prayer. So uh, this, that's why we begin every year with prayer. So um, as we come out this morning, have some people saying, good morning, good morning, Naomi. Happy New Year to you. So good to see you this morning and seeing some other people jumping on. So I won't call you out until, until all of you say hello this morning. So thanks for uh, joining us, Tony and Kathy, wonderful neighbors. Good morning to you and your family. And uh, My wife Stephanie's watching this morning. Jim Kahn, good morning to you. Uh, Jim's been posting about how the uh, Lord's been waking up early to, to pray for everybody. And one of the things he's praying for is pastors. So uh, thank you for praying for me. Um, as we as as we kind of dive in this morning, continue to talk about prayer. Another thing I just wanted to highlight is the fact that when we look at Scripture, we can see that all of life is prayer. Uh, Jesus modeled this for us in what He said. He modeled it for us in uh, how He how He behaved, how He acted. We, we see that Jesus He prayed often. He prayed regularly. He prayed fervent per, uh, fervently with with cries, with tears. We see that in Hebrews five. Uh, we also see that through prayer, uh, Jesus, he healed people, demons were cast out. Uh, when, the, when the disciples were hitting walls and how they were trying to minister and heal people and cast demons out of people, Jesus said this is only accomplished through prayer and fasting. Uh, so this is something we need, uh, we need to engage in with. And one of the things that encourages me is that when we, when we look to the word of God, we see that God is always with us and that he's always speaking to us. That as it relates to prayer, prayer is, is the continuation of a conversation that God has already begun with us. Uh, God is speaking to us. I love what, love what it says uh, in 1 Corinthians 3.16. It, it says, uh, don't you know that you are God's temple and that God is living in you? That when we've, did, when we've given our life to Christ, he is inside of us. He is with us. And then in 1 John 5.14.15, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, uh, we know that we have what we asked of him. You know, God is looking to move in your life today. 2 Corinthians 16, 9 says that the eye of the Lord goes to and, for, to and fro, back and forth, the entire earth in order to strengthen the hearts of those who are committed to him. So as we go about our, our day to day, committed to God, walking with him, we know that he's already looking, he's already there, he's already active, and he's looking to strengthen our heart. Uh, we just need to be walking with that mindset that it's all there. And that kind of brings me to, uh, to the key thing I want to talk about this morning, 
And I want to talk about one of my favorite ways to pray. And one of my favorite ways to pray is just prayer walking. If you've been around Shoreline Community Church, you know that this is something we talk about uh, often. We talk about it frequently. Uh, it's something I engage with, uh, something that, uh, that my kids engage with. And so what are they going to talk about just a little bit about what prayer walking is? And if you wanted to kind of see an example of what it looks like, on Monday I posted on Facebook Live and then we posted it to our YouTube channel about uh, what uh, uh, just, uh, just me prayer walking. So I started off the week with a prayer walk and just got, got my phone out and just videoed it and walked it through. So if you're looking for, any, for an example, you want to join me in a prayer walk, that's the way to do it. So check that out either on our uh, Shoreline Community Church Facebook page or on a YouTube, YouTube channel. You can do that. But basically, prayer walking is just uh, is is just it's being on a walk with Jesus, and it's asking Jesus to show you, to show me His neighborhood. Uh, you know, walking and praying is what Jesus did, is what the disciples did. So many discipleship opportunities uh, took place as Jesus was walking with His disciples. So, a prayer walk is it's simply you're on a walk with Jesus, and you're saying, Jesus, show me your neighborhood, show me this area. Walking and praying. Uh, something else, uh, prayer walking, is it's, it's, uh, it's intentional prayer towards accomplishing the Great Commission. The Great Commission, right, is to uh, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation, making disciples. It's, it's that aspect of, of just saying, God, how can I be active in accomplishing the Great Commission uh, here in this neighborhood that I'm walking where, where I'm out? One of the ways that we do that is as we walk, uh, we pray for ministries that are currently there. If you're with me on the Prayer Walk Monday, you saw that uh, we took some time to pray for not just uh, our church, uh, the church that I'm, I'm uh, uh, so thankful to, to be a part of and lead, but uh, we, we, we pray for other churches, our neighborhood churches, churches in the area, uh, that, that they would experience God, that God would use them and flow through them. Uh, we pray for organizations that are there, businesses that we walk by, uh, uh, other organizations that, uh, that serve the city. Uh, while I was prayer walking, a police vehicle passed by. We, we, pl we pray for policemen and police women uh, who are laying down their life every day uh, to serve the community and to, to help all of us. So we pray for them. The bus went by, prayed for the bus drivers and those traveling, prayed for things that are happening in our area. So uh, that, that's part of it. It's also vision-oriented pr uh, praying that as we look to the neighborhoods that we're in, we're saying, God, uh, what are you already doing in this area? What are the things, ways that you are at work and how can I be a part of it? And that aspect of just walking, it connects you to what God is doing. We're walking, we're praying, we're looking around and we're being active in, in, uh, in walking with God and allowing him to show and to speak to us back and forth. And I think that's why when I'm prayer walking, it's just, uh, it's, it's one of the uh, easiest ways to hear God. Because I'm, I'm, I'm walking, I'm doing something physical, and I'm looking and saying, God, what are you doing and what are you asking me to do? So um, so I, I thought I would just kind of share just kind of 10 prayer tips with you this morning, 10 prayer walking tips, ways to kind of walk through. So as you're going, just comment on these and maybe you have some of your own tips. Maybe you have something this morning, you're like, you know, the way uh, when I prayer walk, here's something that helps me. And so, uh, yeah, just join the conversation, throw those things in and engage in some ways that just help you. So. Here's, here's, uh, here's, here's my top 10, so add some more and we'll just add to it. So uh, num number one tip in prayer walking, keep your eyes open. You're out walking, you're on traffic, you're on people. Uh, make sure to keep your eyes open. Seems pretty obvious, but I went prayer, walk prayer walking with somebody once and they were like, man, how can I close my eyes and pray? And I'm like, dude, keep your eyes open. Keep going around. Uh, number two, uh, pray Bible verses out loud. You know, when I'm going with my phone, I'll have verses up. I have a list of verses for different themes that I use, and and uh, I I just keep keep that open in front of me so that I can be reading the Bible, uh, praying it out loud. Because here's 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 the power of uh, praying Scripture. Not just when we're prayer walking, but even if you're sitting home on your couch or wherever you are, um, the Bible is teaches us how to pray. You know, we learned language when we were babies, and none of you could remember when you were born, probably. But when we were born, we immediately had this language being spoken to us. For me, it was English. Uh, some parts of Canada was French, uh, Spanish, whatever the language was. When we were born, there was a language spoken around us. And as words were spoken to us, they were poured into us, poured into our mind, poured into our heart. 
and it laid that foundation to teach us how to communicate. We learn to speak by being spoken to. And as it relates to prayer, this same principle is at play. We learn to pray by the word of God being spoken to us. When we go back to prayer, prayer is a continuation of a, um, of a conversation that God has already started. God is speaking to us. The word of the Lord is going out. It's going through the earth. And he's speaking to us. He's calling to us. We only know God because he revealed himself to us and he's calling us. So as it relates to prayer, uh, we need to be immersed in God's word. This teaches us how to pray. When we pray the Bible, when we pray God's word, we know that we are praying according to his will. When we ask for things that are found in scripture, we know that we are asking things according to his will. You know, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's why the Bible is so important. And you can tell this when you listen to somebody who's praying and they're praying scripture and there's this fluency that comes out. Uh, you're listening to somebody that has immersed themselves in God's word. So uh, this is so important. I love what um, one of my favorite books uh, on prayer, I have several, but I love Tim Keller's book on prayer. And he talks about uh, quoting Eugene Peterson, he, uh, he, uh, this whole aspect. He says, studies have shown that children's ability to understand and communicate is profoundly affected by the number of words and the breadth of vocabulary uh, to which they are exposed as infants and toddlers. We speak only to the degree we have been spoken to. It is therefore essential to the practice of prayer to recognize what Peterson calls an overwhelming previousness of God's speech in our prayers. So in other words, the more that we allow God's word to come into our heart, the more that we open ourselves to it, the more that we get that language in us, there's a language that pours out from us. Now, as we come to God, we can say anything. We can pour it out before him. But there's a power that comes in when we pray according to his will, according to his way, and using the language that he's given us. Uh, there's just a great power in that. So encourage you to do that. You know, the goal of prayer is connection with God. It's a language. The more that we speak, uh, the stronger that we are in it. So, so uh, boy, spend that time in prayer. Grab, grab your coffee and get before the Lord. Open the Bible in front of you and just begin. Just, just begin getting it out. So, uh, so keep as you're uh, get back to prayer walking. As you're walking, keep your eyes open and pray the word of God. Note number three: uh, watch for God to show you what He wants you to pray for. If you join me on Monday, I was just looking around. One of the places that I walked by was the Link Light Station, something I've been praying a lot for, and uh, and the Lord just began to lead me and just praying for those who were working there, praying for opportunities uh, in transportation. Uh, one of the ways that I've been able to share the gospel with others and share the love of, love of Christ with others has been on public transportation, whether it's on the bus. Uh, I've ridden parts of the Link Light Rail down south of us and uh, just sitting next to somebody, starting a conversation doesn't always happen. There are people that get on transit and they're just going from A to B. They put their headphones in and they don't want to talk. That's great. I respect that. But then there's times I sit next to people and they're just looking for an opportunity to connect with somebody. So um, I began to pray, Lord, even now, you know, begin to show me ways that I can reach out and serve people there uh, that are looking for that, that connection. So we watch for God to show us what he wants us to pray for. Uh, number four, uh, you know, pray silently and out loud. There's times that I just pray silently. Uh, and then there's times that I pray out loud, just kind of reading what's happening around me. Uh, and there's times in groups when appropriate. We're in COVID right now, so there's groups restrictions. But there's times that I've gone with, with a group. You know, Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. And so there's times I've just gone out with a group and I've broken them up in two by two. And you, you go over there, you go over there, you go wherever you want and just pray. And there's, there's times that we would just stop in front of a church, in front of a business. Uh, the Lord uh, would speak to us and say, I want you to stop on this corner and pray. So, um, so yeah, just, uh, uh, just uh, as it's appropriate, as it's open, maybe uh, those that you're in, in a house with, you're able to kind of go out and walk together, get, get together, walk, walk and pray. Uh, number five, use short sentence prayers. There's times I'll, I'll just use short sentences. Times I stop, I pray a little longer. Times I'm just using short sentences, but don't feel like you've got to uh, pray something that's going to be written down and published. Just just pray. Uh, number six, walk, walk slowly. I'm not in a hurry when I'm walking. I'm walking slow. Um, you know, Jesus, as he was walking, he was talking to his disciples. He was praying. He was engaging in so many things. So uh, don't be in a hurry. Uh, just walk slow. 
Number seven, number seven, we're almost there. Uh, claim God's promises. Claim God's promises. All God's promises are yes and amen. You know, uh, I love Philippians 4.19. 4, I'll pray this. It says, my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. So as I'm prayer walking, I'm like, Lord, I know everything I need today. You're going to provide. As I'm walking, Lord, you're going to provide it. I start praying that prayer of provision for people around me, homes that I'm walking through, people that walk by me. Lord, uh, help them to see your hand today providing everything that, that, that they need. Uh, Isaiah 41, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. That's a promise from God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So I, that's a great promise to just to pray through. Uh, when I'm prayer walking, I'm out. I'm like, Lord, help me not to fear. Help me to realize you are with me. Help me to not be dismayed and know that you are my God. Uh, Lord, today I receive that promise of strengthening my life. I just begin praying that scripture. Lord, today I know that you're going to help me. You promised that you're going to help me. So help me, Jesus, be with me today. Uh, you promised that you would uphold me by your righteous hand. And as you begin praying through, you're praying through the word of God. You're praying through uh, the words that he has given you. And it fills you and it resonates in us because we're made in his image, just like that tuning fork that rings. When we speak his word, the, the tuning fork inside of us just comes alive to life. The voice of the Holy Spirit resonates with, with us as we do that. So uh, Romans 8.28, it says, We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those are called according to his purpose. So I begin to pray, God, get me on your purpose. Get me on your plan. I know as I walk with you that all things work together for the good. Whatever is happening, whether I'm sick, whether I'm well, uh, whether today I'm praying for provision, or whether today my savings account is, uh, is at a good level, wherever I am in that, I know that you work all those situations uh, to my good, that conformity to Jesus Christ. And then 1 John 1, 9, this is something I'm going to be speaking on this weekend. It's about confession. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's times as I'm praying, I just begin confessing, Lord, forgive me for this. Forgive me uh, for this thing that happened or give me insight in these areas. And I know that as I confess, God, that you're faithful to forgive me. You're faithful to strengthen me. You're faithful to move in my life. So... Um, yeah, so number seven, claim those are all God's promises. Uh, number eight, I ask him to remove barriers. Lord, what are the barriers here? What are the things that are laid out? Uh, let, let, let those walls come down as I pray, as I just, um, you know, show me those barriers, those things that I'm not seeing, and just speak that to, to the Lord in Jesus' name. Uh, I, I, I pray for those that I'm walking through uh, that maybe, you know, in our area, in our city, addiction uh, is just is, is just such a strong challenge. I think everywhere, just different addictions. So I begin to pray, God, let those bonds of addiction be broken in Jesus' name. Uh, any other barriers? Maybe there's, there's things that God's showing me to walk in according to his will and some obstacles have come up. I just begin praying as I walk. God, as I'm walking today, let those barriers be broken. If there are any barriers that I put up in my own heart, uh, that kind of gets back to confession a little bit. Lord, reveal those to me, like David said. Reveal to me my own notes and the barriers that I've put up that I'm not even aware of. Uh, we begin praying those. Uh, so that's number eight. Ask him to remove barriers. Number nine, keep moving. Just keep going. You know, be very easy just to just just to kind of stop and and not get very far. Maybe the Lord leads you in that. But there's times I'm just like, you know, Lord, help me to keep going. Let me keep moving. Let, let me walk through this neighborhood. And then number 10, uh, immerse yourself in the neighborhood. There's times I've led groups on prayer walks and they're like, man, I'm thirsty. I'm like, well, you know, stop, get a drink, and especially in this COVID season. If there's a coffee house that's open, if there's a store that's open, uh, go in as part of your prayer walk, get a coffee, uh, get a juice, get a water, whatever it is that, re that refreshes you and get a snack, whatever, unless you're fasting and just walk in, you know, bless that business and there's some times, too, that I've done that and that I've just felt compelled just to pray uh, for the owner or to pray for the person serving me. There's times it's open a conversation. You read it. You know, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you, speak through you. Um, but there's times that I've just had great conversations with sometimes it's been the owner of the business who's served me, a uh, coffee house or a bakery or just the the. the uh, the person who's serving me a conversation startup. So uh, immerse yourself in the neighborhood. Uh, someone walks by, if it opens up an opportunity, someone's sitting on a bench, there's times I've talked to people. I talked to a guy 
a local park. He was on a swing, and I just went over and started talking to him, and and he was hungry for conversation and began sharing the Lord. You never know what's going to happen, so just take opportunity as you walk uh, to, to 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 do that. So again, top ten, keep your eyes open. Number two, pray the Bible out loud. Number three, watch for God to show you uh, what He wants you to pray for. Number four, pray silently and out loud when appropriate. You know, the key thing there is not drawing attention to yourself. It's not about you. Uh, I've seen people do, uh, do prayer walks and just do things that just it draws attention to them, not to God, to distracting. Um, worked in a coffee house where there was a guy across the street do that. And everyone in the coffee house, they were just ticked off. <laughs> they were just annoyed because it was obvious it was all about that person. So... Uh, that's not how Jesus did it. So we we bring we bring focus to Christ. We walk in in a way that is on, that honors and respects those around us. The Holy Spirit moves through us. He brings powerful conversations. So we don't need to uh, manufacture manufacture anything. Um, so that's my little sermonette there. Yeah. So uh, number five, uh, don't be afraid to use short sentence prayers. Number six, walk slowly, take your time. Number seven, claim God's promises. Number eight, ask for barriers to move. Number nine, keep moving. And number 10, immerse yourself in that neighborhood. Get a snack, get a coffee, sit on the bench, talk to somebody, engage and uh, be involved in that. So uh, just my top 10 this morning, engage you to engage with that with our prayer walking challenge uh, that you would get out and and just walk your neighborhood, walk your house. You know, if you're, uh, you know, if you can't get out, just walk around your home. Walk around your kitchen island. Walk down the hallway. Just there's something about moving that does that. So I want to encourage you in that. So, Amen, Amen. As we uh, wrap things up this morning, want to encourage you to uh, join us for prayer tonight. Tonight our online prayer service is a different time. Normally it's at seven, but tonight it is at six o'clock. Six o'clock tonight. Very special online prayer service. We did that just for this week so that we can include all of our pastors. All of our pastors are going to be online praying tonight and. Uh, there's a youth, youth online service at 7, so I uh, wanted to do it at 6 to allow Pastor Sean and Pastor Michael to be a part of us. So make sure that you join us tonight. It's going to be just a wonderful time. Uh, we, we always need prayer, but uh, with everything going on in our world, boy, we need to come together. So join us right here, uh, 6 p.m. tonight, Facebook Live for prayer. So again, all of you, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for praying. Good to see everyone coming on. Deborah DeMoss, good morning to you. Uh, Lord, lead me where you want to go. I'm praying that for all of you. So thanks for joining us today and uh, keep praying. Get outside, you know, here, if you're in Seattle, we don't let rain hold us back. We see rain and we just go for it. So grab your rain gear, uh, go for a nice walk and we'll look forward to seeing tonight. So love you all very much. God bless.